Okay, hi there. Uh, many an A-level economics student has wondered about the difference between the, the short run and the long run in microeconomics. When are we looking at the short run? How long is it? When does the short run become the long run? All these kind of questions. Well, hopefully this short revision video will go through the basics and make it clear for you. So first of all, the short run production frame is a time period where at least one factor of production, at least one input is fixed. Typically it's the amount of capital or land. It doesn't have to be, but normally it is. Um, the business has basically chosen its scale of production and sticks with it in the short run. Okay, So they can alter the amount of labor, they can alter the amount of raw materials and component parts and energy. Those are the variable factors. Now, what are the returns to those variable factors? In the short run, we talk about increasing returns to labor, in which case the marginal cost of production is falling, and diminishing returns to extra labor, in which case the marginal cost of production is going up. Returns to scale are not relevant in the short term. And when we think about elasticity of supply, well, that depends on the shape of the marginal cost curve for the firm. Elasticity of supply may be low because a firm may have limited spare factor inputs, limited spare capacity, or there could be quite a lengthy production time frame, for example, in the farming industry or in the construction sector. So that's short run production. In the long run, there are no fixed factor inputs and the business can change the whole scale of production. So we don't talk about increasing and diminishing returns in the long run. That's a short term factor, so not relevant in the long term. Instead, we talk about returns to scale, adding more land, labor and capital. So when returns to scale are increasing, then the long run average cost is falling. And that, of course, is an, an economy of scale. When returns to scale are decreasing, the average cost is rising. We call that a diseconomy of scale. In the long run, supply is likely to be much more elastic in response to changes in demand because all factor inputs can be changed. Now, the key exam point is that the short run and the long run are just basically conceptual time periods. They're theoretical time periods. They're not set in terms of weeks and months and years and the short run and the long run will vary by industry because the production time frame varies by sector. Essentially the way to think about this is that the long run is a period of time needed for a supplier, a producer to have flexibility over all of the relevant production decisions. How many people to employ, how much capital investment to make, those big calls over the appropriate size and scale of a business. A really good example here is the difference between nuclear power. Here's the Hinkley Point uh, power station on the right hand side. You know, building another nuclear reactor and all of the associated infrastructure that goes with it takes many years. So the long run is very long in nuclear power. But yet consider ride sharing services such as Lyft and Uber. In 2017, around 4.3 million drivers globally were working for those companies. By 2022, it's forecast that the number of ride sharing drivers globally, worldwide, will have almost, well, will have doubled to 8.6 million people. So these businesses, digital platform businesses such as Uber, Lyft, Airbnb and Amazon, etc., they can scale their production extremely quickly. The long run for those kind of businesses is much shorter than it is in nuclear power. OK, well, hopefully uh, this revision video, we've kept things simple and uh, that helps you to make a distinction between the short run and the long run.